Hello and welcome to The Power for Pregnancy. My name is Jane Wake. I'm a fitness expert and creator of this program. And I've been working in the pre and postnatal field for over 15 years. Now today's workout is for your third trimester. It's a Pilates workout, it's around 15 minutes in duration. And it's a great way to really prepare you for birth. So I do hope you're gonna join us. You will need something to use like this band. Now if you haven't got one of these, that's absolutely fine. You can use a towel or something like that instead. You may also need a cushion to support your knees and if you would like to use a big birthing ball you can but it's not essential it's just if you've got one and you want to have it handy then please do use it you'll need a mat you'll need some water to drink and just make sure you're in some nice comfy clothing to exercise in and I'll see you in a little bit Hello, good morning, good afternoon, good evening. We are gonna do a nice 15 minute Pilates session for you today. Hope everyone's okay. Yeah. So we're going to start just with doing some little foot pedals. So we're gonna take it nice and gently and I promise we're gonna come down to the floor quite quickly as well in this session. But let's just start with the feet because the feet are so important to Pilates, to the whole core connection. So let's just release the feet to begin. We're just doing some little foot pedals and just get that kind of feeling of being ground into the floor just feel your feet into the floor okay we're now going to take the hands underneath bumps and then just take a nice big deep breath and try and find the core muscles now it's really important to monitor how your pelvic floor is feeling particularly as your baby gets bigger you get more weight pressing down the pelvic floor so we need to ensure that our strength is being maintained so I want you to take a nice big deep breath me inhale Exhale, relax, and then we're going to connect to the pelvic floor. So stop from the back, stop from the front, pull those two feelings together, and then pull up and up and up and up and up. Now that's five ups, and now relax and let it go back down. So I'll do it with a count this time, so you can try and find that number that you can lift up to. It doesn't matter where that number is, but just see how many numbers you can go up. So take another breath, inhale. Exhale, relax. And then lift up from the back to the front. So stop a fart, stop a wee, lift in and go up. Two, three, four, five. And then relax and let it drop back down. Okay, so let's go back to our foot pedals. So Aditi, how high did you manage to get up there? Aditi got up to three, how, four, four. Okay, so that's, that's all good. That's all brilliant. What you need to make sure is that you can still keep coming up as the baby gets bigger and you know what if you manage to come up to five then that's great but if it go, does start to go down a little bit then that's completely natural because the more pregnant you become the more your core muscles expand so the harder it is for you to connect the important thing is that you are connecting and you're continuing to work strength into your core muscles so you are maintaining as much strength as you can but just keep monitoring and making sure that you can at least lift up to one or two floors if it gets to the point where you can only lift up to one then start upping the amount of pelvic floor exercise you do and there are pelvic floor workouts you should be continuing to do those anyway but just remember to keep coming back to your pelvic floor exercises whenever you can wherever you can and it's functional you can do it with other exercises as well it doesn't have to be just lifting the pelvic floor remember it's a whole unit that needs to work together so just keep trying to think about it throughout your day okay we're now going to do some balances so we're going to lift the right foot off the floor engage the core again so lift up come up to maybe second third floor is as high as you need to go and then we're going to lift the right foot off the floor and just do some little foot circles and this is even more important now this is when these foot circles really come to the fore because you really need to keep the circulation going in your feet now now take the leg back behind squeeze into your buttocks if you can take the opposite hand up extend through your body but bring your right hip forward for me a little bit because we don't want to lean into the left now again engage the core muscles lift up up through and find your center make sure as you're lifting up through you're feeling your belly lift in and you're squeezing your right buttock a little bit that's important for control so that there isn't any stress in your lower back if you feel stress in your lower back release relax and come out of the position so now change legs peel the left foot off the floor hold and balance rotate your ankle around is everybody okay yeah 
Okay, and then take your leg back behind you, squeeze into your buttock, lift up through your center, work the shoulder blades down. This hand up is optional. You can keep both hands onto your bump if you prefer. Now take a breath, inhale, exhale, lift up through from the back passage, the front passage and into your belly, squeeze your left buttock, keep that left hip forward and then work the shoulders down, length into the neck and then release. We're gonna do it one more time on each side. So peel the right foot off the floor, hold and balance. Take the right foot off the floor, rotate the ankle around a couple of times each way. And then take your leg back behind you, extend and lengthen, squeeze into your buttocks. Keep the hips nice and level, extend the left hand up. And while the girls are doing this, I'm just gonna check backs. Because what happens, the more pregnant you get, the more the curve can be exaggerated here. So I want you to really try and connect all the way up through into your pelvic floor now and into your belly so that you're supporting your back as much as you can. And when you connect to the pelvic floor, change sides. When you connect to the pelvic floor, it helps to draw the tailbone in a little bit, so it will help to reduce that arch in your back. So that's another really important reason to get that core connection and support your spine. Take the leg back behind you, squeeze into your buttocks, opposite hand can go up, work the shoulders down, length into your neck, breathe it through. So take a nice big deep breath for me now, inhale, exhale, relax, lift into your center. Now we want to make sure we're releasing the calves so we're going to go back into a calf stretch position and just do those lifts and lowers, making sure that the feet are fixed in tram lines. We're just going to do a couple more of these, but I'm, I'm emphasizing these movements for the legs while we're in standing because they are so important to do. You want to keep those calves nice and released. And if you are starting to get cramps into the lower leg and things like that, that's another good reason to be doing them. Now hold the leg down and we're going to do our Pilates exercise bow and arrow. So take the hands out in front, work the shoulders down, apple under your chin. So bring your chin back, take a nice big deep breath for me, inhale. Exhale, slide the right arm back. And if you can, look behind you as you do it, working the shoulder blades down. Inhale, bring the arm in and then take another breath. Inhale, exhale. And we're just going to do one on each side. Look behind you and then bring the arm back in, and then we're gonna change sides. Remember when you're doing these movements through the calf that your heels shouldn't be turning in. So you're trying to keep the feet as fixed in tram lines. And what I love about looking at all you guys now is that when we first started doing this, it was a bit more of a struggle to do that. And now I'm looking and immediately the heels are going into the right position. So that's lovely. So keep turning that heel out so that you're getting your hips in alignment, so feet fixed in tram lines. And then we're going to hold the left heel down, bring the arms up, work the shoulders down, squeeze your left buttock for me a little bit, and then take a breath. We're going to slide back with the left arm first and look back behind. Now use your core as you're doing this. So inhale, exhale, engage the core muscles as you take it back behind you. And then release. Now we're going to go down to the floor now. So changing legs again, we're now going to put the right foot where the left leg was. And then tuck underneath open through the chest and we're going to go up first of all and get that lovely squeeze in the buttocks and get that lovely feeling of openness through the front of the pelvis then we're going to use this position to lower down to the floor so very carefully take a breath inhale exhale engage the core muscles and then lower down but we're not going to go all the way down so lower down lower down lower down lower down and then lift back up and squeeze. Okay, then we're going to do it on the other side to even ourselves up, but we will actually go to the floor this time. So come up, squeeze, squeeze, squeeze. So just a little lunge position and then lower down. Everybody okay? Back vertical, lower down, lower down, lower down, and then you can come to the floor. Well done. Okay, so what we're going to do now is come onto our hands and knees. So we're into an on all fours position. In this position, we want to check the back positioning, which is where we've got a little lift in the tailbone. Now, if you get any issues into your wrists, what you can do is just grab your blocks or anything you've got at home. It could be a folded up towel, it could be a cushion, and you can, if that feels okay, use your hands in this position, or you can come up onto your knuckles. So if you get any pain in your wrists, then you can do that instead. Tuck your elbows in, and to begin with, I just want you to just move your weight forward into your right hand, then into your left hand, then into your left knee, and then into your right knee. And it's like you're scribing a circle, just rocking around. Now your spine, as you're doing this, for the moment we want to keep it still. But here are some key points that I want you to focus on. The first one is tucking your elbows in as if you're holding a pencil underneath each armpit. The other one is that your eye level stays above your fingertips, so it doesn't drop right back behind your hands, yeah? 
Okay, go back the other way now. So now go in a, in a clockwise direction. So you're going to go right hand, right knee, left knee to go the other way. Now imagine you're balancing a glass of water on your back. So while the glass of water is there, you don't want your back to move. Your tailbone is lifted, and I call this happy dog wagging its tail position. So the tailbone is up slightly. So you've got a little bit of length in your spine, and Kirsten's back position here is absolutely perfect. And then I want you to all work on those shoulder blade positions, so slide the shoulder blades down the back of your rib cage a little bit. Now, Aditi, your back is dipping a little bit too much, and you can solve that by actually using your core. So remember how I was saying that when you're in a standing position that when you connect your pelvic floor, it drops your tailbone down for you naturally. So rather than actually moving your back, just hold, pause, so everybody pause, hold, and do exactly the same as we were standing. Take a breath, inhale, exhale, and then lift up from the back, back passage to the front. Don't move your spine, just lift up from the back to the front and lift up and up and up and up and up. And that will automatically align your spine. Yep. So when you're trying to align your spine, don't think about moving it. Just think about core engagement, muscle engagement, strength to help you get your posture right. And with the upper body, because we want the head, just move your head there, we, and you put it in the right position, we want the head to be in the right position. So how do we work that? We work muscles underneath the chin. So bring the chin in as if you're holding an apple or like a grapefruit actually underneath your chin. It's a bit bigger than an apple. And that will engage muscles underneath the chin and put your head in the right position. Feel the length coming into the back of your neck. And then you use muscles that pull the shoulder blades down to put your upper back into the right position. So slide the shoulder blades down the back of the rib cage. Tuck your elbows in and imagine you're holding a little clutch bag underneath each armpit. Yep. So you're holding strength into your upper body. And then to release it, we're going to take the knees wide. Kirsten, just hold there for a second. And then just drive the weight back. Now... Kirsten is suffering from um, a little bit of pelvic pain, so I'm not asking her to take her knees wide for the moment. But what I am going to do is I'm going to get her the ball. So if you have a ball, we're going to start to use the ball a lot more in class now. Uh, it's really worth getting one of these balls. So what you can do, rather than taking your knees wide, you're going to rest your arms onto the ball. Yeah? And you can pull back there, but keep your knees in. Yeah, and then you get the same stretch yeah, without taking your knees wide. Yeah, exactly. Um, and what you're trying to do is drop your chest through a little bit. Aditi, do you feel okay? Yeah, don't go low then. Keep your bottom up. So keep your bottom up and just drop down that way. Does that make sense? Yeah, does that feel okay? Now, Aditi's naturally wanting to move, though, and do you know what? That's fine as well. And, and when, while Kirsten's on the ball, she can naturally rock on it. That's why these balls are so good. You know, natural movement is really positive. Another position we can adopt as well, so try this again at home, because everybody's different. Guys, if you come up and just go onto your elbows, and then your bottom naturally comes up high, and you can kind of rest your hands in your, um, uh, your head in your hands, and just allow your pelvis to rock side to side. See how that feels, yeah? So these are various different positions. Now, these are all great birth preparation positions. And the great thing about it is the pelvic floor can relax in this position. And this is what I want you to now do. And it's a bit scary doing this because we're constantly talking about pulling the pelvic floor up. But do you know what the pelvic floor is like any other muscle in the body? It needs to contract and it needs to lengthen. And to give birth, you want your pelvic floor to lengthen. And the more you are able to have that control over your pelvic floor, the less likelihood there is for intervention or tearing. So that's why it's so important to feel your pelvic floor move. And for the moment, I want you to just let the pelvic floor go and relax. So just let the pelvic floor relax. Okay, now though, I'm going to ask Kirsten to keep using her ball. Um, but we're all going to come up and put a block between our knees. Um, and a block underneath the knees. So, Kirsten, you can do the same thing as well. I'll just hold your ball for you. But it's just basically Kirsten's going to use the ball so she's got a little bit more support. And you can do that at home as well if you need to. Or you could just have your hands on the sofa. And um, we're just going to hold this position here. Now, this is an exercise that we've, we've done before. And we're going to hold the hands up as if you're carrying a tray in front of you. Take a nice big deep breath. Inhale, exhale. Part the hands. Squeeze the shoulder blades together and drop them in and down. And then we're going to squeeze the buttocks and then move the knees in on the block. Now, 
I'm asking Kirsten to rest on the ball so that she can just still work the shoulder blades down, but she's just working with that little bit more support and control. And now I want you to take another breath and lift up through the core muscles. So take a breath, inhale, exhale, and lift up through from the back to the front and lift up and up and up and up and up and try and lift up through the pelvic floor and then release it and relax and let go. And then we're going to do that again. So take a nice big deep breath, inhale, exhale. Part the hands, squeeze the shoulder blades together, squeeze the buttocks, squeeze in on your block or your towel or whatever you've got between your knees and then lift up and up and up and up. And I should have said take a breath first then. So if you want to do that again, take another breath, inhale, exhale, lift up and up and up and just get that lifting up feeling inside. Now, one more thing I want to talk about uh, before we do our next exercise, in our, which is going to be a very big opening stretching exercise, is the fact that um, if you're ill and you're coughing and you're sneezing a lot, it really can um, cause issues for the pelvic floor. So there's an exercise that we can do called the knack. And yeah, let's do it without the block because this is, this is quite important to feel it. You okay? Yes. Yeah, you all right? Um, okay, so for, for this one... Um, it's the exercise is called the knack, and it's a way of quickly drawing up through the pelvic floor. So if you feel you're going to cough or you're going to sneeze, you've engaged the pelvic floor first before you cough or you sneeze, so you've got a little bit more control on what you're doing. So this is what you do. You think you're going to cough or you sneeze, and you can feel that. You haven't got time to breathe, so you're just going to really quickly go from the back to the front and into your belly. And it's literally like you're shutting the door. Yeah. So everybody try that now. So just lift up. Back front, into your belly, then breathe. Yeah? You already have to do that. Yeah. And it's called the knack, and it's like this scoop up from the back of your pelvic floor and into your tummy. So let's try it again. Okay? So you, you can feel a sneeze coming. Your nose is tickling. So don't, don't worry about your, if you're holding your breath. It doesn't matter right now. You're going to stop a fart, stop a wee, into your belly, then you can release. Okay, so practice doing that. It's not an exercise that we would do generally, but it's, it's what I call an emergency stop exercise. Okay, right, so from now, we're going to go into a releasing stretch for the hips. So we're going to cross the right leg behind the left, and you're going to take your hands over to the left, and you're going to draw back, sending your weight into the right hip and releasing and relaxing the right hip out. So just hold that position there. And you should feel a stretch going into your hip, and this is really important. Now breathe it through in this position, inhaling and exhaling, and relax into the position. And then we're going to change sides and do it on the other side. So you're now going to cross your left leg in front of your right, take the hands over to the right, and then stick your bottom out towards the left and just get a stretch going into the left hip. And then release and come back up. And then we're just going to do one more stretch to finish off. Now, I'm going to ask Kirsten to do this with the ball again. But um, Aditi and... Jana, you can do this with a block underneath your left knee and take the right leg forward. And we're just going to do one more stretch for the front of the hips. So this has to be a focus for us all now, going up towards the birth. This part of the body needs to be open. So we want to keep these muscles nice and long. Now, if you have any SPD issues, you're not going to want to go into this position we're in right now. So Kirsten's going to do this with the ball, and she's just going to engage her glutes tail underneath and really try to push your hips forward and just get length that way. We can place the hands over the pelvis on that left side, squeeze your left buttock and how far forward you go is entirely up to you. Yep, so you can just hold here and feel a stretch. Yep, or you can come forward and open the hips some more. Now, feel free to move with this. Yeah, if you want to move, then that's good too. It's all about just keeping length and openness in the muscles. If you like the idea of holding, then you can hold, take a breath, inhale and exhale, and lift up. And the reason why moving is also good is because it's about keeping muscles pliable as well. It's when they're constantly shortened 
that we then tend to have issues. So whatever feels good to you, and as you say, Kirsten's moving a little bit, I can move a little bit, or you can just hold still, engage your core muscles though, still try to lift in through those core muscles while you open the hip, and then change sides. So we'll just do that on the other side. Kirsten, you can just relax maybe over the ball, and then trust, just try again, just in case your back's feeling anything, and then we're gonna change sides. So place the hands over the hip. So you can start with your feet, your knees pretty much at 90 degree angles and then engage the core so lift up from the back of the pelvic floor into the belly and then come forwards if you want to you don't have to you can stay here but just pull the skid up over you on your hip and just keep that hip nice and open the hands should feel like they're supportive as well as you do that and then if you want to come forward and open the hip a little bit more you can if you want to move with it you can whatever feels good to you and just release it so we're going to finish that session now. I hope you've enjoyed it. Um, make sure you keep revisiting and doing cardio workouts at least three times a week and doing Pilates at least two or three times a week. And just make sure you're doing some kind of core connection every single day. Well done. Well done for completing this workout. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please do like and subscribe to our channel so you can get more of the workouts in this series. Please do also comment below. We really like to hear from you and find out how you're feeling right now in your pregnancy. And what else would you like from us in order to give you the workouts that you really need? So do stay in touch and hope to see you again soon.